Hi, my name is Gina, Gina Batty, and I love to walk. Yesterday, when I was out on my, on my walk, out in this beautiful countryside that you can see right behind me here, I felt guided to record a video to describe my experiences and what I've been going through for the last six months. Now, it's safe to say that the last six months have been really quite challenging. I found them really difficult. I've experienced something that I've never experienced before in my life. And yesterday on my walk, I felt guided to share my experience, my journey and my thoughts with you. So I've been writing my second book. I've been working on it for, I don't know, maybe a couple of months now. And I've been really struggling, to be perfectly honest. And the reason that I've been struggling is because I experienced something that I can't put into words. I can't find the right words to describe what has been going on for me within the last six months. Now, words mean so much to me. So whenever I think of a word, I always think about what it means and what it might mean to other people. I've been searching for a word to describe how I felt and what I experienced and it, I just am really struggling to find those words and even now I don't think that I've really found the right words. So, so let me explain, okay? Um, let's see where to start. I guess the trigger for all of this was a massive restriction on my freedom. You see, for the last maybe 18 months, Paul and I have been travelling quite extensively and Recently when we came back, we came back in October from the last trip and our cat, Albus, was very poorly. He's had diabetes for the last six years and when we went to pick him up from the cattery, he had gone dramatically downhill. He looked really uh, underweight, e extremely underweight actually, and he was hungry all the time, he was screaming, I've never heard an animal scream like he screams. He sounded in so much pain and we had no idea why. We had no idea what was going on. We've been treating him through vet's advice for the last six years. And to be honest, we've not really gotten anywhere with it. So when we came back from uh, our latest trip, you know, we could see how poorly it was. And something inside me said, we need to take this into our own hands. We need to do something differently. And that's what we decided to do. We decided to research different techniques and different things that we could do with him that would help him to heal because it was clear to us that his body was in severe trauma and severe distress it was awful to watch it was absolutely devastating to see it so i went away you know we did a lot of research we tried to figure out what we could do to help him and to to get his body to the point where he could heal again we came across uh, something called tight regulation protocol. Now, I won't go into the details, but basically um, we decided to home test him and to totally change his diet and figure out how we could get him to the point of healing. Now, in that process, um, we, we needed to home test him. We needed to test him every two to three hours, but also feed him every two to three hours and keep a really close eye on him in between those points. We had to regularly test him to make sure his levels were at the right point and all that kind of stuff. So to cut a long story short with that, what, what we came to was the fact that we needed to be in the house. We couldn't leave him for any length of time because we needed to observe him. He regularly had hypos, so we had to make sure we were there on hand to bring his blood sugar levels up and you know deal with the aftermath of that. And what that resulted in was me basically being housebound for the majority of the day to do all this testing and to deal with him. And, and literally my work took a back seat. I, I couldn't really work that much. Um, and it was quite bizarre because, you know, I love to go outside, you know, walking and being outside is so grounding and centering and it really refreshes my spirit. And for me not to be able to go out for a, a morning walk, which is something that I do every day, was really difficult. And within two days, I felt it within me. I felt like I had almost weights pressing me down. It was awful. And I was totally different. My How I behaved towards other people, you could tell that I hadn't been out for a walk. So, 
yes, the, the, my, my, my freedom was restricted dramatically. You know, there was no more traveling, which we'd been doing for 18 months, um, which was fantastic. We love to travel. We love to see new things, meet new people, experience cultures, all that stuff. So for me to be in the house every day, tied to injecting and testing was so just soul destroying, I guess, really. And on top of that, Albus screams. So literally from the minute he wakes up to the minute he goes to bed, he would scream the house down. Imagine having a, a six week old baby who screams for food or screams to be changed or what, whatever the screaming is for. Generally with a baby, you know what that's about. However, with Albus, we have no idea. There's, you know, we feed him, he screams. We don't feed him, he screams. So it's almost like he was on, he was a six week old baby every second of every day. And, you know, now he's healing really well, by the way, now, if, in case you're wondering, he's doing really great. Um, now he doesn't scream so much, but back then it was so noisy. The house was just painful to be in. So imagine being in that situation 24 hours a day, not being able to leave the house and listening to that noise. That was the situation that I was in and that was the trigger point. And it, it got to a point where I was in the kitchen one day and I, I almost see it as like a, a volcano. Okay, so you imagine a volcano's um, active and it's bubbling away under, under the surface, isn't it? Or the lava's kind of bubbling away. And then all of a sudden something happens, you know, the, the, the um, seismic um, activity takes over and all of a sudden poof, the eruption takes place. That's how I felt. I was in the kitchen one day, something triggered me and boom, I erupted. And Paula was there and she actually said to me at the time, you need to take some time away from this. You need to get out of the house. You need to go and do something different. And at that moment, that was the point when I realized how far it had got, what, what the situation actually was for me. Now, as I said, words mean a lot to me. So I'm, I'm sat there trying to figure out what the hell is going on, how I can describe it, what the word is. You know, as, as humans, we try to put a, a name to everything, a label to everything, don't we? And I was trying to do the same. Now, the first word that came to mind was breakdown. Now, breakdown, it's a funny old word, isn't it? Break, I didn't break, and down, I certainly wasn't going down at that point. Um, since then, obviously, I've been thinking of lots of different words. I actually researched the word breakdown, and the first word that came up on a, uh, on a dictionary to describe it was basket case, amongst many other negative uh, words. So breakdown, to me, is a very negative word. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not surprised there's a lot of stigma attached to it. It's like a taboo subject, isn't it? So then I got to think of other words, and the next word that came to mind was meltdown. So I've used that a few times when I've been trying to describe how uh, the experience I had. Now again, I've been reflecting on that word meltdown. I didn't melt, and I wasn't going down. It's a little bit more gentler than breakdown, but still it, it just wasn't the right word. Eruption or explosion was certainly the right word for the experience that I had when I just, I, you know, I exploded. <laughs> Um, but to describe the overall situation and, and what I was feeling, I guess the closest word I can, I can use right now would be separation. It was like I felt separated from myself, definitely from other people, and it almost felt like I was separated from my true self, my true spirit. I was totally in ego mode, you know, everything about the situation, when I look back now, I can see that my ego was so there every single moment of every day, as I was snapping at him, as I was snapping at other people, as, you know, all these thoughts were going through my head, that was my ego. And when I think about separation, you know, I, I think, okay, I was certainly separated from myself, it, it almost felt like... And, and I even explained this to Paula in the car one evening, that when we were in a social situation, I could see myself kind of looking down on myself and I could hear the words that I was saying, but it didn't feel like they were my words. 
it was really bizarre. I've never experienced that before. And that is totally the closest word that I can get to explain how I feel or how I felt at the time. And as I said, even now, I don't think that's the right word. I don't feel like I've got the words to describe the experience, which is really strange for me because words mean so much. And, you know, I, I do a lot of writing. I do a lot of communicating with people. So for me not to find those words is, is really quite challenging. <laughs> I find it really difficult. So that was my experience. And the, the separation, I, I actually noticed on the walk yesterday how, how things have changed over the six months. So before, when I went out for a walk, I was still walking when I, um, when I could, basically. Um, sorry, I had a fly then. Um, I was still walking whenever I could, which was very, very, very limited at the time. But when I did go out, what I noticed was colours were very, almost monochrome. Everything was like very dull and, you know, I could see the colours, but they weren't bright. They were very, um, it was almost like there was a filter over them. Imagine like you're wearing sunglasses and everything's like dulled slightly. It was like that. And the noises were very muffled. Um... You know, interactions with people, I felt very separate. I didn't feel like it was me when I was communicating. Whereas I went out for my walk yesterday, and as I was walking home, what I noticed was it, it almost came out of nowhere. So it was, it was really good to see that I could see life was everywhere. It was so abundant. You know, I was looking around, I was seeing the bees, I was seeing, um, you know, dogs, I was seeing the cats, I was seeing the squirrel. I've got a resident squirrel in a tree. I saw him yesterday which lit me up, obviously. Um, but also the colours. I noticed the colours were hugely vibrant. It was almost like they stood out against things in the background. It was so fantastic to see. And the noises, I could hear all the birds tweeting, uh, the wind rustling. Uh, today you'll notice the wind's a little bit higher. Uh, but yesterday it was quite gentle. It was a beautiful day yesterday. The sun was shining. I felt the sun on my skin. Oh, it was just, it was just beautiful to see it. So that's how I know that I've come quite a distance since since then. Now, I'm guessing if you've been following me for a while, you will know this, that I had a big trigger point, um, another big trigger point in my life when I was diagnosed with IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And at the time I was a size 16, um, which didn't even register to me actually at the time. It was the issue for me back then was the symptoms that I was experiencing with IBS. And as I said, that was a massive trigger point for me. My, my whole life changed as a result of that. Uh, as, as you can see, I'm no longer a size 16. I'm a size six. I maintained it for about, oh, I don't know, I don't count anymore, maybe four years, something like that. Um, and, and it was like, when I reflect back on that, that experience, I feel like the onion was chopped in half. I want to use the analogy of an onion for a moment. So the onion was chopped in half and it was like, wow, here it is. This is what your life is at the moment. Look at it all as it is and experience it and then do what you can to change the situation. And that's exactly what I did. And I've come so far since then, you know, it, it, it quite astounds me how far I have come. And now when I think about the situation that I've experienced recently, it's almost like I feel like I'm starting to peel back the layers of the onion even further. So it, it feels like I'm stripping them back and laying myself bare. However, I do want to say that I still feel like I'm wearing my underwear and one sock. Okay, just for the record right now. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like I'm peeling back those layers. And, you know, every day I'm peeling back something different. I'm uncovering another belief or something that I need to experience fully. Um, I'm stripping those layers back. And I, I feel like I'm on a journey to find my true spirit, my, my real self, my true spirit. And it, it almost feels like I'm, I'm looking and I'm... I'm searching for this true spirit. I'm looking to find my true spirit. And then I'm, I'm wanting to awaken it and then live it every single day. I know that's possible, you know. I know that is totally possible. And I know that the ego gets in the way. So a lot of the work that I'm doing at the moment on myself and with others is very much about ego and stripping that back to basics. And 
yeah, just stripping it back, stripping away the mask even. I, I, I feel like we wear a mask and we hide behind that mask quite a lot. So I feel like I'm stripping back that mask and I'm, I'm making sure that I give myself permission for my true spirit to shine. You know, in the past, I've, I've felt like I've had to get permission from other people. But I've decided I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to give myself permission to let my true spirit shine. And that feels brilliant, you know. My true spirit is evolving every single day. I feel it. I feel it is evolving. And it definitely is a result of the experience that I've been going through, you know. Over the last few months, I have totally laid myself bare, 100% laid myself bare. And as a result, now I know where I am and I know what I've learned so far. And there's a lot of learning that's been going on and I'd love to share that with you. You know, that's one of the reasons that I'm recording this video. It's interesting because I don't know what the next layer of the onion is going to be. And even though that's quite scary at times, I feel like there are many more layers to go. We've all got lots of layers. And yeah, I, I, I have no idea what that next layer is going to be and what that will bring and what it will bring up and what I will experience and, and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm actually quite excited to see what that is. All I do know is right now I'm taking small steps to healing every day. I'm stripping away, breaking away from the ego. I'm stripping back that mask. I'm awakening my true spirit. I'm giving myself permission for that true spirit to shine. Now, I want to say here that I'm not here to teach you. I'm figuring this out myself right now, as you can, as you can see. So I do want to let you know what, what I'm doing. And I do want to introduce you to others as well that are going through similar experiences because I know I'm not on my own to experience this you know I know you've probably experienced something similar so I'm, I'm totally here to share to introduce you to others to share experiences and my journey all of that stuff and I'm quite excited to see what unfolds really going forward and that's why I created the group you know I created a group on Facebook called Authentic Self UK if you're not part of it and you want to be if you want to you know learn more about this then go and check it out it is a closed group so you will need to um, hit the uh, ask, ask to join or whatever the terminology is these days um, so yeah that's why I created the group so we have somewhere to discuss all this stuff I'm on a journey, I'm sure you're on a journey too. Now if this interests you, or you've experienced something similar, or you, you are experiencing something similar right now, and you want to find and awaken to your true spirit, I'd be so happy for you to join us in the group to discuss your experiences and to let us know what is going on for you right now. I'm going to do the same, you know, I'm, I'm sharing my journey on there, letting people know what's going on, I'm letting people know you know, what I'm learning, what I'm doing to really connect with my true spirit again. And on the group, I'll also be sharing videos. I'll be sharing some more videos on there. I share them once a week. Um, talking about whatever I feel guided to talk about at the time. You know, I don't have a specific agenda, as you can tell from this video. Um, I don't have any agendas. I'm just going to talk and see what comes out, really. And hopefully it will help you in some way or support you in some way or maybe even help others around you. So if you have others around you at the moment that are going through something similar, invite them to join the group Authentic Self UK. And yeah, it'd be great to welcome you to, to, the, to the mix and uh, see, see what happens. Now, I'd love to hear of your experiences, okay? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you're working on at the moment, what's working for you, what's not working for you. And to share this journey with you, we're all on a journey, okay? And who knows where the journey is going to end, you know? I know I'm loving this journey, the journey that's unfolding behind me, in front of me, all of that stuff. The group Authentic Self UK, I would say, is a closed group. So it is a totally safe space for you to talk about whatever is going on for you at the moment. I totally lay myself bare in that group and a lot of other people do too. If you feel comfortable enough to do so, it would be great to hear of your experiences. 
this is a safe space for you to uncover your troop spirit and to lay bare just like we are all doing. It'd be great to welcome you to the group. It's Authentic Self UK. If you're not already a member and you want to be, head on over, join the group and it'd be great to welcome you. In the meantime, have a think about what I've said. You know, if this resonates with you, I'd love to hear your comments. Please get in touch with me. You can do it on the group. You can do it um, many different ways. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on LinkedIn, all that kind of stuff. It's been great to chat to you. I hope this has given you something um, to take forward. My name is Gina. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the scenery too behind me. Thanks very much and we'll speak soon. Bye for now.